we always ask ourselves, what's the worst that can happen? I decided to switch the question around. What's the best that can happen? Who is this modern hero? My name is Michelle Poehler, and this is my story. Fear has been a defining factor in Michelle's life ever since she was a little girl, a trait she learned from her mother, who was raised in a home haunted by the Holocaust. My grandparents were taken to labor camps just because they were born Jewish. And all of their family died in the camps. Although Michelle's grandparents were able to escape to Venezuela, the trauma of the Holocaust turned into paralyzing fear that carried on from generation to generation. My grandfather wouldn't leave the house for months, for example, because he was afraid. Mm -hmm. Then my mom was born in this home full of fears and trauma. I grew up seeing my mom not going on roller coasters, not going into tall buildings, all these things, because she was afraid. And I was like, oh, it's normal. So I started imitating that behavior. I would just say, I'm afraid of dogs. I'm afraid to be by myself. I never even considered doing things that were outside of my comfort zone. Growing up in Venezuela, a country ranked as the second most dangerous in the world due to excessive murder and kidnapping rates, only compounded Michelle's fears. In Venezuela, you have to live inside of a bubble if you want to be safe, because it is dangerous to be outside. So I never in my life walked anywhere. You could get robbed or they would kill you for no reason. The intense environmental fears left Michelle wanting more out of life. When I was growing up, I would travel to the United States every year. And I see that things are not like that here, that you can do all these things that I was not able to do back home. So 19-year-old Michelle took a huge leap outside of her comfort zone to study graphic design and advertising in Savannah, Georgia. Soon after graduating, she got hitched to her high school sweetheart, and they spent three years in Miami before taking a bite out of the Big Apple. Is this the first time you felt like, this is really where my life starts? Yes, making the decision to move to New York was a huge fear for me, but it felt so right. While working full-time at an advertising gig, Michelle enrolled in a master's program for branding at the School of Visual Arts, where students were asked to creatively tackle one task in a different way for 100 consecutive days. They asked us to identify one thing that could come in between us and our dream. I started listening to this song, I Lived, by One Republic, and I could never say that I lived. I can't say one night or one day in my life that I experienced a feeling they're describing. What was that revelation like for you? I just started crying and you know, it's just something that you can't control. I know that because of my fears, I'm constantly limiting myself and I will never get that far. I immediately knew that that was my 100 day project. For the sake of living life to the fullest, I'm going to do 100 days without fear. With newfound confidence and a touch of trepidation, Michelle set out to conquer 100 fears in 100 days. My first fear is accepting this challenge because I'm terrified of doing this project. Every day I would wake up with horrible stomach ache because you wake up and you're like, oh, I'm still in the project, I need to face a fear. What am I doing today? Oh, right, today I'm going on a roller coaster. <laughs> One by one, Michelle checked challenges off her list, posting videos of her progress online, and the world quickly took notice. I'm working out right now, I'm like shaking. Michelle posed nude for an art class, grabbed a mechanical bull by the horns, went surfing of sorts, enjoyed a crunchy cricket cuisine, okay, it's not bad. posied up to a creepy crawly tarantula. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm doing this and danced like no one was watching. I'm ready to go dancing, let's do this. Other people started joining me. 
So I was like, this is not happening. How is this happening? Other people joining me dancing. It became a dance party in the middle of Times Square. Like, I was going all out. Oh, I saw you. Yeah. You were good. You have some good moves. Thank Sanchez. you. Thank you. <laughs> Was that liberating? Yes, that night, I was like, this is what it feels to live. Like, wow. yeah, it was a revelation that night. She racked up more than 4.5 million views on her YouTube channel, and stars like Ashton Kutcher, Zoe Deschanel, and Lil Wayne showed her love on their Twitter feeds. Was there pressure having this all unfold on social media? Because some people could look at it from the outside and be like, oh, it's a gimmick. Oh, yeah, so much pressure. Criticism started going, like, haters, trolls on the internet criticizing the project. They were saying, these are very small fears. Where were you leaving before? Like, in a bubble or under a rock? And I'm like, yeah. People just saw surface level mm -hmm. that you were tackling all these fears. But they didn't know who you are. Yeah. And the fact that these are really real to you. Yeah. But then, very quickly, I started to feel empowered by those comments to tackle bigger fears. From that point on, the sky was the limit, and Michelle tackled fears she never even knew she had. She took trapeze classes, went skydiving, swam with the sharks, repelled down a mountain, and jumped off a cliff. Michelle also set out to overcome the emotional fears that scared her the most, like her fear of getting older and of someday losing her parents. I kept imagining my life without them and how horrible would that feel? So I decided to write them a letter, a very honest letter. I actually asked them, like, please, Dad, be more expressive, because I know you love me. Can you just tell me how you feel sometimes? I need to hear it from you. And after that moment, he became so expressive, telling me how proud he feels. And I know that I changed him with that letter. But it was the letters from the people following her project that led to a life-changing epiphany. I started to receive messages from people saying, you inspired me to do this, or I have this huge fear of doing this, and now I'm considering tackling that because of your story. What went through your head when you realized, I no longer am doing this for myself. I am representing so many people. Now I have this responsibility to help other people say yes more often than when you say no. Michelle decided to say yes to a huge life decision and quit her job in advertising so she could face her fears full time. I was like, Michelle, you have a movement going on, you have people following and very inspired and they want more out of this. So and I was like, definitely my job has to go. With nothing holding her back, Michelle faced her final fear, which also happened to be her biggest, public speaking and she shot for the stars, giving a speech on the TEDx stage in Houston, Texas. It went by so fast, and then people started standing up and clapping. I was like, what? Person by person, they start hugging me and crying and saying that I changed their life and that they feel confident to go after their fears after this talk. Even though the project was technically over, Michelle's new life had only just begun. Did you realize at that point that you couldn't stop there? Oh yeah, I decided that I was going to see how can I turn this school project into a business. Michelle launched Hello Fears in 2016 and has turned her biggest fear into a career. Now she shares her message with employees at powerhouse corporations, including Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and Netflix. Fear is our ally and it's there to keep us alive. Speaking at these places, the one comment I would normally get was I'm going to share this with my teenage daughter. She's so afraid. So at that point, I decided that I was going to speak to girls. We're going from girls' school to girls' school, and that's amazing. You have a very unique opportunity to be a role model for them and show them how you can use social media for good. Now more than ever, I feel this responsibility of using my social media to deliver this message in a constant basis. As Michelle inspires people at conferences and in classrooms around the globe, she no longer lets fear define her life. Instead, she's allowed it to redefine her purpose. 
Will your future be fearless? No, never. We don't ever want to be fearless. We want to be brave. We all have a purpose on Earth, and now I think I know what my purpose is. And what is it? To inspire people to face their own fears and see that there's a wonderful world if they decide to make the choice to say yes. If this modern hero inspires you, please share and don't forget to like and follow us on Facebook.